prove that d by dx of x to the n equals n times x to the n minus 1, where n is a positive integer. So this is known as the power rule, and there's several different ways to prove it. It's a little bit of a tricky proof, so bear with me here. Um, let's start with the limit definition of the derivative, because that's where you generally have to start when you're proving derivative rules. So we know that f prime of x, that's going to equal, and there's two different ways you can write it. I'm going to write it as the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now remember, the function that we're looking at here is x to some power n, where n is a positive integer. So if I'm going to plug that in, this is going to look like the limit as h approaches 0 of x plus h to the n minus x to the n all over h. So the numerator here is the thing we're going to have to deal with. And in order to figure out what to do with that, let's take a little detour here and let's uh, try and understand how we can simplify this. So first thing I'm going to do is just so I don't have to keep writing x plus h over and over again, let's call that a. So I'm going to let a be x plus h. And then at the end, I'll plug back in uh, for x plus h for, for a. And then I'm going to let b be x here. So this is really going to look like a to the n minus b to the n. It'll just be something easier to work with, so I'd have to keep writing the, the x plus h over and over again, and then we won't have x's all over the place uh, when, we're, when we're working with this. Okay, so let's look at a to the first power minus b to the first power. Well, that's pretty simple. That's just going to be a minus b. How about a to the second power minus b to the second power. What's that? That's the difference of two squares. That's going to be a minus b times a plus b. Okay, nothing special so far. How about a to the third power minus b to the third power? That's the difference of two cubes. Now maybe you happen to know this formula or you can look it up, uh, but this is going to be a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. And I'm starting to see a pattern here. It looks like when we have the difference of a to some power and minus b to some power, it looks like we get an a minus b, and then something's going on here. It looks like we subtract 1 from the exponent here, so we have a 2, and then it looks like the a decreases. It goes from a squared to a while the b increases. It goes from b to b squared. In fact, you can think of it as a squared here, a to the first here, a to the zero here, because a to the zero is one, and then b sort of does the opposite. So if that's true, then it should mean that a to the fourth minus b to the fourth should be a minus b times a to the third plus, and now a goes down 1, a squared, and b goes up 1, b. And then a goes down another 1, b goes up to b squared. Plus, and then a now would disappear, and we would have a b cubed. And you can multiply this out, and in fact it works. That does equal a to the fourth minus b to the fourth. So now if we were to keep going here, so... We do this a bunch of times. We do it until we get to some other power. In general, be a to the n minus b to the n. And if the formula holds, this should be a minus b times a to the n minus 1 plus a to the n minus 2 times b plus, and then I could keep writing terms here, but I'm just going to say you get the pattern here, plus dot, dot, dot keeps going, and then this will be a times b to the n minus 2, and then the last term, the a would disappear, and you would have b to the n minus 1. 
So the question is, is this the way it works? Does, does this thing on the right equal a to the n minus b to the n? So let's explore that. So the question that we were asking was, does a to the n minus b to the n equal a minus b times a to the n minus 1 plus a to the n minus 2 times b plus dot 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 plus a times b to the n minus 2 plus b to the n minus 1. And we want to know, is that true? Well, let's multiply out this thing over here on the right. So if I look at a minus b times a to the n minus 1 plus a to the n minus 2 times b plus dot 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 plus a times b to the n minus 2 plus b to the n minus 1, what does that equal? Well, I can multiply everything by the a, just sort of distributing here and minus 2 times b plus dot 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 plus and I have a times b to the n minus 2 plus b to the n minus 1 minus and then I have the b I can multiply through so minus b times the same stuff a to the n minus 1 plus a to the n minus 2 times b plus dot 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 plus a times b to the n minus 2 plus b to the n minus 1. So what's going to happen here? I'm going to multiply through by a all these terms. I'm going to multiply through by b all these terms and I'm subtracting these. And I think some stuff should cancel. So let's try it. So this is going to equal so imagine multiplying the a through a times a to the n minus 1. That's going to be a to the nth power. And I'll put this in parentheses here. Plus, this is going to be a times a to the n minus 2 times b. That's going to be a to the n minus 1 power times b. Plus, dot, 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 plus. And then eventually down here, we're going to get an a squared times b to the n minus 2 plus a times b to the n minus 1. So that's multiplying the a through. What about the b? So minus. Now I have b times a to the n minus 1 plus this is going to be a to the n minus 2 b squared a to the n minus 2 b squared plus dot 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 plus and then a times b to the n minus 2 times a b so that's going to be a times b to the n minus 1. You have to really know your exponent rules here. And then finally I'm going to have b times b to the n minus 1 that's going to be b to the n. And now the, the funny thing here is we see a bunch of things cancel, which this crazy looking expression actually ends up being something kind of nice. a to the n minus 1 times b, that is going to cancel over this. a to the n minus 1 times b. a times b to the n minus 1, that cancels with that. And in fact, buried inside these dot dot dots here are some other things that are going to cancel. There, there's an a squared b to the n minus 2 here. Well, that's the term right before this. That would also be a squared b to the n minus 2. So that's going to cancel. And this a to the n minus 2 b squared, that's the term that would be right after this. That's going to cancel. And in fact, all these terms in the middle here end up canceling. And so you end up getting a to the n minus, because we have the minus sign right here, b to the n. Perfect. That's what we wanted. That's what we're going to use in the proof. OK, so now we can actually do the proof. So just to remember here, this was what we just showed. a to the n minus b to the n equals that complicated thing there. 
And also remember that a was equal to x plus h and b was equal to x. I made that uh, designation just so I didn't have to keep writing x plus h over and over again. But now we're actually going to use x and x plus h. So let's write down our limit definition of the derivative again. That was the limit as h approaches 0 of, and we had x plus h to the n minus x to the n all over h. And now I'm ready to use this formula here. So this is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of. So this thing here looks like a to the n minus b to the n. And now I can use this formula here. So this says that I have a, well what's a? That's x plus h, x plus h. And minus b, what was b? That was x minus x. Okay, and all that is going to be multiplied by this thing right here. So a was x plus h, so that's x plus h to the n minus 1 plus, and that's going to be x plus h to the n minus 2 times x plus dot 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 plus uh, x plus h times x to the n minus 2 plus x to the n minus 1. Okay, and then all this, this whole thing here is all going to be over h. Okay, so now we can make some simplifications here. One thing I see, x plus h minus x. That's just going to be an h. And I have an h up here, and I have an h down here. Those h's are going to cancel. So I'm just going to be left with this thing right here. So let's write that out. So now I'm just going to have x plus h to the n minus 1 plus x plus h to the n minus 2 times x plus, and then all these terms in the middle here, plus x plus h times x to the n minus 2 plus x to the n minus 1. And now I'm ready to actually take the limit. I can let h go to 0 here, and if I do that, this is just going to be x to the n minus 1 plus, and this is going to be x to the n minus 2 times x plus, and all the terms in the middle, this is going to be x times x to the n minus 2 plus x to the n minus 1. Now if you think about it, these terms in the middle here are also going to be x to the n minus 1. I'm going to have x to the n minus 2 times x. That's the same thing as x to the n minus 1. Same thing here, x times x to the n minus 2. That's the same thing as x to the n minus 1. And if you think about it, the way the powers work out, everything in the middle is also going to be x to the n minus 1. So really what I have here is just a bunch of x to the n minus 1s. Everything is going to be x to the n minus 1, the way it works out. So dot 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 plus x to the n minus 1 plus x to the n minus 1. How many x to the n minus 1s do I have? Well, turns out I have n of them. How do I know I have n of them? Well, count up the terms here. Think about the formula that I have to begin with. Look, for instance, at the powers of, I don't know, we can say the a. Here's, we can think of this as n minus 1. Look at the 1 right here. That's one term, two terms, and then we're counting them all up here, and eventually we get back down to 0 for the a, but remember, this really could be like a to the n minus n, a to the n minus n minus 1. And so you see that we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 n minus 1, n terms. That's a total of n terms in this expression up here. So that means that 
we have n of these things, so that's the same thing as n times x to the n minus 1. And that's what we were trying to prove. So I know this is kind of ridiculous. Uh, hopefully you won't have to go through this more than once, but that's how you prove the power rule.